untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video recorded during the early access event, so thanks to Wizards for letting me preview all these awesome new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One on this fully unlocked account. Today we're bringing back Fight Rigging as the deck got a bunch of exciting new additions, mainly Archfiend of the Dross at 4 mana, a 6-6 flyer that enters a battlefield with 4 oil counters on it, and at the beginning of our upkeep we have to remove one of those oil counters, then if it has no counters left we lose the game. So that feels very scary whenever you can suddenly lose the game, but in my experience it hasn't been a huge issue since Archfiend can very quickly kill the opponent, especially because we also drain the opponent for two whenever one of their creatures dies, so pair Archfiend with a few well-timed removal spells and we can clear a path for it and make sure we kill the opponent in a timely fashion. And then of course Archfiend being a 6-6 means it can quickly get up to 7 power alongside fight rigging after picking up an extra plus one counter to cast our free hideaway card, and those hideaway Away cards include maybe a 7 mana Flesh Gorger, which will enter as a 7 5 with Menace and Life Link and Ward, making the opponent pay life equal to its power. And then we also get to play with Nissa, Ascended Animist, the new 7 mana Planeswalker, starts out at 7 loyalty if we cast it off Fight Rigging, but we also have the flexibility of casting it for 5 mana and 4 life, thanks to the completed ability, in which case it enters with 3 loyalty as opposed to 7, and then a plus 1 will make an XX token, where X is Nissa's loyalty, so first we add the loyalty counter and then we get the token, so if we start at 5 mana it will be a 4-4 token, if we start at 7 mana of Fight Rigging we can make an 8-8 token right away, then the minus one can take care of artifacts or enchantments, and the minus seven is an overrun effect, giving the team plus one plus one and trample for each forest we control. Of course we do need to make sure we have some black mana to cast our double black archfiend in a timely manner, so we can have to limit the number of forests in our mana base, but we get to play with six basics, as well as the proving ground which counts as a swamp and a forest, so that's also quite nice alongside Nissa, and then the minus seven can hopefully help us end the game. Now the upside of these finishers in a fight rigging deck of course is that we can also cast them for either 3 or 5 mana, so that definitely helps out the curve, so we're not stuck with a bunch of expensive cards that we cannot cast otherwise, and same is true for the Rootwire Amalgam, another prototype creature, can play it early as a 2-3, and can also play it as a 5 drop that we can also sacrifice to make a larger hasty golem token, which can also maybe help us end the game. And then we're also playing four copies of Shakedown Heavy as another cheap enabler for fight rigging, and if the opponent doesn't want to take six from the menacing creature, they can decide to let us draw a card and untap it instead. Can sometimes be a little awkward when we're trying to kill the opponent with Archfiend, and the opponent has the option of letting us draw with a Shakedown Heavy, but it's still a pretty good card that can maybe get a chunk of damage in early, and then help us set up the kill with Archfiend later. And of course being an enabler for fight rigging, very important as well. So we're not playing some of the more exciting finishers, could play the new Tyranax Rex as a haste creature that we can maybe cast for free with fight rigging and attack right away. We're not playing some of the other prototype creatures like the Skitter Beam Battalion, which have featured in the Junt fight rigging deck before, so it's definitely less reliant on the fight rigging, so we don't have those awkward hands where we have a bunch of expensive cards that we cannot cast, at least in this size still quite manageable at 5 mana. And then we've got some cheap removal spells with four copies of a Drown and Icker. It is a sorcery, so that's the main downside over Go for the Throat, but it can give a creature minus four minus four, which gets around indestructible, which appears on some of the new Phyrexians. And then we can also proliferate, which is quite nice alongside Archfiend, as we can add an extra oil counter, so we also get an extra turn. Can maybe proliferate a plus one counter from Fight Rigging, or even a loyalty counter from Nissa to get to the ultimate a turn sooner. And then a two copies of a Go for the Throat, still very useful can take care of some 5 toughness creatures like Shieldred, which Drown doesn't deal with, and being an instant always a huge upside, and then 4 copies of Cutdown as more cheap interaction, and 2 copies of Bushwhack, which can help us find a basic land to maybe fix for double black for Archfiend, maybe get an extra forest for Nyssa, and can also be used as a fight spell, great with our large Archfiend and Shakedown Heavy, maybe even gain some life in the fight with Flesh Gorger. And then the rest of our mana base is pretty simple, just some black green duels, and no Boseju to have as many forests for Nissa as possible, the Abandoned Mire and 5 Swamps. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's not quite gonna cut it. This has potential if we find a creature to go with Fight Rigging. Now the conservative line is to get rid of one Fight Rigging, so at least we can grow the Amalgam. 
which is probably wise. Although the highest upside, of course, is to keep double fight rigging and eventually find a creature to enable it. Opponent red black. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, play a tap land so we can play our amalgam on two. Keeping up cut down also an option. So Junt Callers for a Scram Gorger. Probably fine to take out. And then we can fight rigging before playing Amalgam. Maybe wait until we've got a 5 mana Amalgam. Another Scram Gorger. And a Flash Gorger. Okay, play Flash Gorger now. And then rigging into a 5 mana Amalgam. And then at least our creatures can avoid a go for the throat, taking them out. It's gonna be the Jukai Visionary. And we'll fight rigging. Let's hope for some juicy targets. Archfiend seems like the best option here. And attack. Scrap Gorger exiles cut down to pick up a counter to eventually become a 3 3. Could still lose our Flesh Gorger to a Drown and Icker. Alright, Nissa can blow up Fight Rigging. Although then the Flesh Gorger can finish off Nissa. I guess Nissa can also go after the Flesh Gorger itself. As well as the Amalgam, so that's bad news. Find our own Nissa. I guess that's the play. And then they can destroy our fight rigging. Yeah, it's getting kind of messy. What if I do play Amalgam? Then next turn I can play Nissa for 6 mana, which means the token's gonna come out as a 6-6, six, six. and then Fight Rigging enables it and we get an Archfiend. So maybe playing an Amalgam here to tempt them into killing it as opposed to the Fight Rigging is still better. Amalgam down. And a Fable. Okay. So need that last card to not be an instant speed removal spell or author answer to fight rigging. Scrap Gorger attacks for three, gets another oil counter. Shakedown heavy, interesting draw. Could be an alternative to Nissa. Although Nissa is definitely the more mana efficient play. Yeah, I think Nissa still gets the nod. Six six becomes seven seven. Free Archfiend, which threatens lethal. Fable discards one land only, so they must have a good card in hand. That's concerning. Alright, never mind, I guess Archfiend will cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay, even though we're pretty far from fight rigging combo. It does seem functional at least. Yeah, Ivy we can take out at least. And we'll just do it now. Make sure we don't run into any protection spells. 
Contaminator, we can go for the Throats, or now I could also play Shakedown Heavy to trade. But uh, I think this is slightly safer, again, in case of pump spells. Curiosity, draw two. And uh, probably fine to tap out for Heavy now. Opponent's got an interference to just cycle. Good synergy with Ivy to maybe draw to. There's a backup Ivy. Okay. So Heavy gets to attack, and then we'll decide whether we want to try and take out Ivy or maybe play 5 mana Amalgam. Yeah, given that our opponent has a bunch of mana on tats. I'll play the Amalgam for now. Put in counters. Fair enough. And there's a Rot Priest. That's the combo with Ivy to quickly poison us to death. Two cards left in hand. Ivy attacks. And applies another poison. One card left now. Okay, step one, attack with a shakedown. Nissa's great. So I can play six mana Nissa, make a token. I have three forests in play, although the overrun's not particularly effective with Heavy being one of our creatures. So let's Play Nissa, make a token. Alright, another counter spell. That's too bad. But our opponent's on empty now. Never mind, draw two. And Contaminator, we can maybe go for the throat. Can wait for them to maybe double block and then take it out. Ivy, it's for two. That are not planning on blocking heavy, most likely. Opponent takes six. And then we can play five mana Amalgam and keep up. Go for the throats. Still happy to top deck a fight rigging. Can hard cast seven mana flesh gorger and Nissa as well. Have to be careful with how we time go for the throat. And it's also unclear which creature to target, since they're all threatening in their own way. Put moves to attackers. And uh, I think I block contaminator, make them make the first move. And then we can respond. Shore up. So, yeah, let's go for the throw to response. And counter spell. Yeah, that's a powerful one two punch. At least we still trade for Contaminator here. And then we'll be able to play a seven mana Flesh Gorger and resolve it. opponent decided to copy the go for the throat, that was not what they meant to do, but it's an easy misclick to make. We're up to seven poisons, so still kind of in danger. But now Flash Gorger should be lethal. I guess they could still maybe chum block with a second creature. Yeah, this could have been a lot scarier with an IV still in play, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hands could use a fight rigging, but I'm gonna try it out. Bushwhack and find a swamp. And then we get to play kind of a fair mid-range game for the time being.
opponent on a Grixis Proliferate deck, it seems. Do we want to cut down the hybrid? Not really. Although we could prevent early poison at least. So close call. I think we'd rather make sure we curve out Flesh Gorger into Archfiend. And then maybe a Nissan 5. Another hybrid. And a bushwhack. Yeah, let's just play Flesh Gorger. See if we can't outrace the poison. Opponent hangs back. So I feel like just playing Archfiend's gonna be better. And then Bushwhack maybe can fight the Bankbuster with Archfiend if they crew it next turn. So I don't want to trade Flash Gorger when they can get these back pretty easily. Opponent draws. And a third hybrid, okay. And another cut down. Feel like we just attack all out, see if they want a triple block. Now we've got plenty of answers at instant speed. Double block chump. So, on the one hand, we could let damage happen to play Nissa, and then blow up the bank buster, or we could make a token. Both are reasonable. If we make a token, it's gonna be a 4-4, so we'd still trade for Bankbuster, and add loyalty, so that feels pretty good. Yeah, let's just let damage happen. And then if they eventually replay the hybrids, we'll have the answers. Just want to resolve my Planeswalker while I can. And make sure we keep up the pressure with our Archfiend. Venser, not a huge problem. Although Drown and Icker means they get to make a token and then now crew Bankbuster to kill Nissa, so that's kind of painful. That was the worst case scenario. Okay, so we just have an Archfiend left, but plenty of targets for our removal at least. Second Archfiend, okay. Play that and then kill Venser, as opposed to the token. Attack. And then we should be able to clear a path for a lethal attack next turn. Yeah, Archfiend does not mess around. It is kind of scary at times, but uh, the payoff seems there. Edict, just sacrifice the one with two counters. And our opponent should still be dead here. Another Nissa. We're not going to get a chance to play here. And the opponent's often forced to kill our Archfiend before we lose the game to it, because the damage adds up quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is an easy mulligan. This we will try and keep. And one cut down can go. Still missing a creature to enable fight rigging, although eventually a mulligan could get there. Opponent's a green-white with a wormlet. Yeah, that's the type of card I don't mind taking out early. And there's Archfiend, perfect. So now we've got our turn 4 enabler for fight rigging. Just need another untapped land. Opponent's a Phyrexian deck with another Wormlet. And the Defector Might will grow it. Shakedown Heavy also works with fight rigging. Guess we'll fight rigging first here, put a counter on it so we can attack past the opponent's stuff. Playing heavy is also reasonable, 
although it does expose it to the 3 mana Phyrexian that exiles a smaller creature, which does not hit enchantments. So this might be a little safer to guarantee the fight rigging going off. Got a couple options. 7 mana Flesh Gorger's tempting, although maybe we get greedy, grab another fight rigging and hope to find Nyssa with a second one. Since we haven't gotten the chance to put a Nyssa in play yet. So the Annex Sentry could exile one of our creatures here. The Hive to make some 1-1s. One Another reason to like Nyssa in this matchup. And then the Might will protect the Wormlet. Bushwhack probably just searches up a land even though we could fight. And then we'll get a Forest. And we can still play Shakedown Heavy to enable Fight Rigging, play another Fight Rigging, and hopefully that one can hide a Nyssa. And of course now we have double Fight Rigging in play, which is also not irrelevant. No Nyssa, but I'll grab an Archfiend. Okay, I tried. Hive pretty nice with the Wormlet. Still no poison damage taken, at least. And Gala Greeters, more artifact synergy. And a Dissident, also makes a lot of sense. So our opponent's deck is going off. Wormlet gains Death Touch, can gain more life. And the Dissident gets to place a counter somewhere. But the question is, can they beat two big flyers? Okay. And then at this point we probably put the counters on the Amalgam to spread out the wealth a little bit. Could just put one counter on it to beat the Wormlet. And the other one on Shakedown Heavy. Free Archfiends. And smash. Probably get to draw with the heavy. Finding another one. But we just produced 12 power and toughness worth of flying creatures in one turn. Opponent accepts the trade. So we'll get two Archfiend triggers as well. Okay. Mondrak to double the tokens. Pretty nice with a Dissident and a Gala Greeters here. So it appears like they're pretty dead to the Archfiends. Okay, move to combats. One each will do. Okay, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing fight rigging, but a decent hand nonetheless. Turn to Amalgam, turn 3, Shakedown. Got a bit of interaction. Put in mono white so far. And a spirited companion. So it strikes me like an Elish Norn deck. Opponent already chumping. Turn 
turn three wedding announcements. Could be more of a token stack. Oh, I'll play Archfiends and then for opponent chumps they'll at least take two extra damage. Now heavy can be a little awkward with Archfiends when our opponent can just let us draw instead of taking damage and then we might end up dying to the final oil counter being removed. But opponent's already at 12 so two attacks from Archfiends could be enough. Revelry will gain a bunch of life back, make two tokens. So yeah, a very dedicated tokens deck here. Mondrak is no doubt in the opponent's deck somewhere. Can transform Amalgam to make a hasty token. Playing another heavy is probably better. And then we can cut down to maybe blow up a double or triple block situation. So now we get to draw off Shakedown Heavy. Opponent takes eight. And we'll play another one. So cut down represents two more damage. Opponent falls to seven from their own hive. And Mondrak might be a little bit too late to the party here. I should probably cut down a creature now before they can sacrifice it to Mondrak's ability. Kill a token that can block. And then they should be dead to the Archfiend. Okay, let's move to combats. There's a fight rigging too. And there we have it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a third land. Can we keep this? It's pretty slow to get going. There's no real interaction for creatures. And of course, no fight rigging. So I think we can take a mulligan there. This is a little bit better. And then I have to decide what to get rid of. Probably the Amalgam. And keep both Shakedown Heavy and Archfiend. So if we draw fight rigging, great. If not, we still get to curve out with some beefy beaters. Opponent Junt Colors. So could see a go for the throat, take care of Heavy. For now, a Beast Caller. It's fine to cut down. Backup Archfiends, great in multiples. Okay, move to combat's attack. Heavy down. At least it'll cost him two life. And hopefully double Archfiends is still gonna get there. Contaminator. Not bad either. And there's a fight rigging. Don't mind if I do. Possible playing a second Archfiend is still better, but uh, this is too much fun. Okay. Could get an Archfiend anyway, or could get a 7 mana Flesh Gorger, which sounds like the better deal. Opponent falls to 11. So if they try and take out Flesh Gorger, they die to the Archfiend on the following turn, and our opponent's just too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a combo all rolled up, including some early interaction. So sign me up. Just need a juicy hit of Fight Rigging. I'll take a Nissa and a Flesh Gorger for sure. Let's see what we're up against. Black-white. There's Nissa. A little bit too early here. Opponent on Esper, Colors, and Adenic. That we can cut down. And then Heavy, first versus Fight Rigging is an interesting question. Opponent could certainly have answers to enchantments. More likely to have answers to creatures, but we have a replacement Heavy. So the upside here is probably a little bit higher. At least an opposing cutdown is not going to work. Rafine, perfect. 
and go for fight rigging. And what do we get? Just an Archfiend, I guess. Could also grab Drown and then play the untapped land to pay the ward cost. I guess that's kind of the safest play, if you will, before Rafine gets out of hand. Although Archfiend can just block it pretty well. Although it does put us on a clock from our own Archfiend. And Archfiend's not the best combo with Heavy, necessarily. So let's go for Drown. Play the untapped lands. And then we can even proliferate here onto the Heavy. And we'll see if they take the damage or let us draw. Opponent takes 8 for now. Wouldn't mind drawing an untapped land so we can play Nissa. Although another heavy, still fine. Shieldred. Fair enough. And there's an answer. I guess we'll just kill Shieldred now before attacking. In case they let us draw. And our opponent explodes. Fair enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand does not seem particularly exciting. Take a mulligan. This I can try and keep. Just missing fight rigging. Turn one forest into adaptive. Always a good start, although cut down an answer to it. We'll see what else they play first. Another adaptive, that's fine. Yeah, can cut it down now. Play Shakedown Heavy. And then double Archfiend should be decent against Mono Green. Contaminator still trades for Heavy. Put on double blocks. Take that trade any day. Archfiend triggers twice. And we're off to the races. Spinoderm starts out as a 5 5 with hexproof. So for 5 mana, opponent will need a large reach creature. Or maybe some fight spells. Defiler's not going to do it. Powerful card, but Archfiend's just going to fly over here. Yeah, it's just that easy sometimes. Alright, so we got to see our black-green fight rigging deck in action, and even though I tried my best, we never got to cast a free Nissa for 7 mana of fight rigging, but that's of course the dream in this deck. And even though the ultimate's not going to be all that devastating if we don't have a lot of forests in play, I still try to include as many as possible within the mana base, while still being able to cast all our double black spells. And then the Archfiend has also been very impressive whenever we combine it with Fight Rigging, but even in games where we never draw Fight Rigging, just playing a turn for Archfiend seemed very good, especially when backed up with a few removal spells. So it's definitely here to stay. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.